Okay, let's get straight into it. So as I mentioned before, the goal of any good sports science program is to uh, ultimately reduce the risk of injury, particularly around our soft tissue injuries. Um, so your hamstring strains, groin injuries and uh, calf strains, which are the, the three most prevalent in uh, team sports um, that have require a lot of uh, high intensity efforts, both in straight linear fashion, but also um, in your lateral planes. So we want to make sure that we're um, building good resilience over pre-season, off-season training to ensure the athletes have capacity to be able to handle game loads uh, and back-to-back ability to recover and perform back-to-back game demands. We'll start with the GPS side of things. So we're, we're measuring the highest risk activity you know, in terms of their running loads um, using the GPS, which just ultimately measures their everything they do on the field from change of direction work, the contacts that they get to the collisions, uh, the jumps, the lands, all the deceleration work and acceleration work. And of course, your different speeds of running. So your total distance, your high speed running and sprint distance. Um, So I'll go into a a chart a little bit later on on how we break it down. Moving over to session RPE, there's plenty of research on this and it's been around for a long time. As you can see, Bob brought brought it in 1982. Uh, He's got the 6 to 20 scale, which has been scientifically backed, uh, as well as the 1 to 100 and the 1 to 10. Um, I found a research paper by Aaron Coote uh, and John Quinn with the GWS Giants in the AFL. Uh, and that compared the one zero to 100 and the one to 10 Borg scale. Uh, and there wasn't a huge amount of change in, in the data. So for me, I've always used the zero to 10 just because it's far simpler for the to track uh, for the coaches and staff, but also for the athletes to understand. Um, so as I mentioned, um, looking closely at monitoring fatigue, if you do have heart rate variability or most of your athletes have a smart um, watch, like a Garmin or an Apple, they tend to have HRV at the, um, and they're relatively pretty good data. So you could use that um, for an athlete that's rated really low, like a three out of 10 on their energy. You might reference their um, data in their, on their smart watch and just see what their seven day average with their heart rate variability is and what their sweep quality has been. And then from an education point of view, it, it's really talking on that, how they can improve their sleep quality and how important sleep is um, to, to ensure that their nervous system is getting adequate recovery from week to week leading into the games. Big fan of heart rate variability. In fact, um, my, one of our most recent podcast episodes with Justin, uh, who's worked in the NHS and, and I felt he recommend using heart rate reliability with all the teams that he consults with. So if you haven't listened to that podcast episode, make sure to check that out. But it's a great tool to use for um, monitoring your physiological load and having an actual objective measure with wellness. Um, so lucky if you're using your GPS and then you've got your session up here, you've got an objective measure and a subjective measure and you're putting them together to, to see any fluctuations in the data. You could do the same with your wellness side of things, how are the athletes responding to the load.